Just go solo. This is Solo Travel Talk. Your solo travel advisor is Astrid Clements. There is a huge difference between being alone and being lonely on the road. Hello, everyone. I'm Catherine, Astrid's producer. Regular listeners to Solo Travel Talk know that Astrid wants to help you overcome any obstacles to your solo adventure. Loneliness or the fear of being lonely is a big one. In this episode, Astrid is going to offer you the how-tos of going solo without feeling solitary. Astrid, people often share their solo travel fears with you. How do people express their fear of loneliness? That is, how do you hone in that the fear of feeling alone is an obstacle to solo travel? Well, I'll just share with you uh, that the three big obstacles really to solo travel are, first of all, safety, dining alone, and the, the fear of being lonely when they're traveling. So this really is uh, uh, one of the, the biggest challenges anybody who is thinking about solo has to, to overcome. So uh, I get a lot, of, uh, a lot of questions about this. I, I'd say my key questions are, why are you traveling solo? Don't you don't you want to share your experience with somebody and go with others and what happens when you you know you get lonely? I always listen very keenly to that because I know that they are struggling and they really want to know. You know, it's either they want to know, well, you know, am I going through a life-changing period and she's not telling anybody or why is she doing that? And a lot of people who know me, who know I have been traveling solo for over 35 years now, know that I do it, and I do it a lot. And now, obviously, you know, I have a a website, etc. So they're intrigued by it. I realize that for them, or people who haven't done it, especially people who are what I consider your baby boomers, you know, people who are a little bit older. The young crowd, they're much more open to it, obviously, and even the people in mid, mid-age mid range. But the thought of going somewhere solo on a vacation just sounds dreadful. I mean, they're really, to go somewhere they've never been totally by themselves, no family and friends, nobody to talk to, what happens if they get lost? I mean, it just sounds like the horrible, the most, you know, horrible way to to think that you could have a good time traveling. And so I always I always say, well, you know, solo travel isn't for everybody, but you can learn the skills that you need to deal with some of your fears and specifically loneliness. And uh, I, I will tell them that, you know, I, I'm pretty lucky because I rarely get bouts of loneliness. But I have had them from time to time, and I have had them out on the road. But what this does is if you keep doing it and you keep uh, learning these skills, you'll be so surprised. You, you will really realize that it is fabulous to be able to be happy alone. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, to be alone, at, you know, when uh, every time you travel or even, you know, in your day-to-day life. I don't mean that because I do travel with my family. I do travel with my friends. And sometimes I take group tours, which I don't like to do a lot, but sometimes I do it because I think it's smart. So, by going solo uh, and traveling this way, it really does make you think about how you're going to be happy and be alone. And I think this is a great, one of the great byproducts, I'd say, of solo travel. I like that you're saying that it's a skill because when you say it's a skill, it sort of implies that it's something that you can practice and get better at. And that, that also, if it's a skill, it might not be super easy right off the bat. It is something that could be improved. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I know the first trip that I ever took, I was very young. 
uh, 18 years old, freshman uh, summer of my college year. I went to Nuremberg, Germany. I had planned this great trip. It was a college exchange program. Lufthansa Airlines had sponsored it. This was to get my German fluent. So I just was so excited about it. Well, I mean, from the minute I touched down in Amsterdam, had to get the train uh, all the way to Nuremberg to checking into the uh, female uh, boarding uh, house that I was in and then finding my job at the department store. It, It was... I mean, from the weather to the new food to I really couldn't speak the language at first. I I was just in such shock emotionally with the culture, my emotions. Everything was just like, oh, I mean, it really hit me hard. And after about three weeks, my father, he had called me and he, he sensed that I was really in a bad space. And I told him, I said, well, I'm just homesick. But I said, no, I don't want to go home. You don't have to come here. Because he kept saying, I'll fly here. And I said, oh, no, no, you don't have to do that. Well, I stuck it out. And my German got better. Really, after three weeks, it was like magic. Everything started to get better. Because I really think, like, I got through some of, of the shock of it all. And I was being able to kind of orient myself to the place, etc. And it turned out to really be the uh, a life-changing experience for me. So I must say this is uh, the byproduct of it, I guess, or the result is the die was cast and it was set in stone (laughs) that I would become an avid solo traveler. And look at what's happened today. I'm a solo traveler advisor with my own website my own blog, and now this podcast. (laughs) I also want to point out that keen listeners will know that uh, you've actually addressed now we have the some we have some episodes that deal with safety issues we have an episode that deals with the solo dining and this is the loneliness so your episodes have taken care of those top three concerns and obstacles to solo travel. Well, I hope I hope I've done a good job. I think you have. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) There's Astrid, so there's a vast difference between being alone and being lonely in the solo travel context. Can you share your thoughts about these differences? Okay, well, just bottom line, we all know we can experience loneliness anywhere. It can be at home, at work, traveling with family or friends. I mean, loneliness is a, a fact of life. It hits you sometimes, and sometimes you know why, and sometimes you don't know why. You know, I'm not real well-versed in psychology, in kind of understanding the whole dynamics of, the, of, of loneliness. So I always look at things that are a challenge to me or something that I need to overcome in an analytical or common-sense way. So that's how I approach things that, you know, I'm trying to uh, get through. So let's let's break down loneliness really into two parts, because this is kind of how I think about it. You know, being alone is a physical thing, a physical fact, but feeling lonely is an emotional feeling. So when when this when you're feeling lonely, you need to ask yourself, what's triggering this feeling? Am I overly tired? Am I exhausted? And let me tell you, this, you can start, if you get too tired when you're traveling, this is what can kick in the feelings of all kinds of, oh, like you need comfort or, and it, it'll go into loneliness. So that's one thing you should ask yourself, is this just because I'm just too tired? I'm tired and I need to I need to rest. All your defenses kind of kind of start breaking down if you're if you're exhausted or not getting the the proper rest. Oh yeah, and that's invariably for me, I will twist my ankle. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I will really.
really do that. It's terrible because I'm off looking at different things and I will miss that curb. I will stub my toe. Yeah. <laughs> Something will happen. So, um, you know, that you, you can ask yourself, am I just tired? Is that is this what, why I'm feeling this way? Secondly, uh, are there some reoccurring or unresolved issues that are resurfacing? Are you dealing with a heartache maybe that you never really have come to terms with or that from time to time is just so painful that it comes up, you know? Or are there things at home or at work or in your life that you still haven't figured out how you want to handle? You know, just basically unresolved stuff. If this is what's causing the loneliness, that's very normal. So, and you, and there are different ways to deal with that kind of loneliness, okay? Then next, is your loneliness just coming from some kind of self-doubt or an illogical thought like, oh, nobody loves me, I'm weird, uh, <laughs> I'm a loser, am I nuts or crazy for traveling solo? I mean, it's just goofy things come in your head. But that is that is part of being alone. That it, you know, that's not a totally uh, irrational thing to happen. But it is illogical. Okay. And then the fourth thing, what I just touched upon: Are you just homesick? And being homesick is very normal. You miss your dog. You miss your your husband. You know your, your bed. Oh yeah, yeah, your bed and <laughs> everything. So I understand that. And I made reference to my my trip to Nuremberg and my first trip when I was uh, a freshman during the summer holidays. That boy, I, I went through all stages <laughs> of a lot of emotions because of that trip. So I'll just go on to say, really, the it's part of learning the art of solo travel is to what I consider embrace the fact that you're physically alone somewhere, but emotionally you can lean on yourself and take some action to get over that lonely feeling or feeling lonely. And that's, like I said, you're physically alone, but you can lean on yourself to deal with, with the feeling of being lonely. That's part of the skill or part of what your goal is as you're developing the skills to not be lonely or, you know, to suffer from loneliness and prevent you from going, uh, traveling solo. I love that distinction. I'm going to write, I'm, I'm writing that one down. That was <laughs> really good because it really makes the difference because, because I think that we, if you're especially if you're having those feelings of loneliness you can start to conflate that you're not with anybody with you know your physical state with those bad feelings and you're telling us to keep those really separate and identify them separately yes yes because you can, like i said you can be feeling lonely in your hometown in your home yeah. there's there's some country songs about feeling lonely in love <laughs> yeah <laughs> you with people and you're feeling lonely and i must say okay so it's normal to feel lonely. Yeah. That's a fact of life. And it will hit you at strange times. And I know mine usually is triggered when I'm tired, yeah. when I'm very fatigued. And when that happens, my big one is, well, as, a, as growing up as a child, my parents divorced when I was young, and my mother was not in my life on a day-to-day -day basis. So mine goes into, I didn't get enough motherly nurturing. And so it makes me sad that that is, was part of my young, young days because, you know, I'll see other people with families and their mothers and all that kind of stuff. And I'm real good about it. And, you know, I have a very good relationship with my mother, but I still, that, that brings those feelings up. So when this happens, sometimes I'll just cry out of the blue. And then I just let it flow. And, you know, I, I always know, well, this is going to pass too. And it'll get better. 
And with that said, I want to share a song with y'all that I love this song. And sometimes I'll I'll YouTube it on my phone or whatever, because it always just gets me raring to go if I start sliding into a, a place where I'm thinking, oh, woe is me. <laughs> Which that's not very often. I mean, I I must say I'm blessed because I'm just kind of a naturally happy person. And there are a lot of people who are not like that. It makes me sad for them. But this song is uh, was written by Billy Joel. It's called You're Only Human. And uh, it's a great song. It deals with heartache, emotional pain, and loneliness. And the key lyric or the key uh, theme in the lyrics are, is basically wait in the corner till the breeze comes in till your second till you get your second wind. And basically, if you just be still, let the breeze come in, you're back and you're ready to get back on track. Don't despair. And I think it's a great song. It's very upbeat, even though it deals with something that is, hey, man, I know how bad it is. And he's been there, too. So he's he really does a great job with this song. So basically, put it in your iTunes or your 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 i you know, on your uh, phone. And if you're traveling and you feel lonely, put on <laughs> your only human. <laughs> it's a really good song. So, um I'm just kind of in this question as saying, yes, you know, when you travel solo, you're all by yourself. But, you know, your feeling of loneliness really, like I said, is rooted in some kind of an emotional uh, space. And, and, you know, you're going to have to deal with that whether you're at home or on the road. You've you've talked before in, in past episodes about the fact that there is like a problem solving aspect to solo travel, and this the, I just can't stop thinking about the relationship between what you're talking about and that problem solving. Well, that's kind of the way I always approach everything. I'm, I'm by nature analytical, and I like to make lists and solve this problem take steps take action you know like uh plan your work and work your plan yeah. <laughs> which i do that a lot but every time i really do it something takes you off the track but you have to know that just let it go sometimes yeah. because you're going to get there eventually if you're supposed to get there yeah i'm just yeah i, I don't I, I don't mean to get way off track in no this. <laughs> me neither but it's it's i i just am thinking like this is probably part of this is probably like you are setting the conditions to allow that problem solving to go if you're in this kind of state if you're in this kind of mindset oh yeah yeah you i mean you have to you have to take action to deal with it you know you can't just completely um sink into despair or real dark place and i think Probably most people who've experienced some real, real heartbreak in their life, it hurts so much they don't want to ever go there yeah. anymore. <laughs> so they figure out how they're going to uh, set boundaries, what are the things that they're going to do in order to, to stay balanced, healthy, and have a good life. But, it, you know, it, it, you, have to, you have to learn how to do it. Astrid, I know you always have tips. <laughs> <laughs> Probably too many. No, <laughs> that's what people are dialing in for. <laughs> so what are some of the tips to fend off loneliness? Okay, well, I love sharing my tips because here again, these are all my strategies. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're here for. That, that is what we're here for. So I have 20 tips Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> to, to help you combat or deal with loneliness when you're traveling solo. Okay, the first tip is develop a routine. Now, I made a little reference to list or whatever, but I like discipline in my life. And I live kind of like that, you know, pretty disciplined, even though I'm doing all kinds of different things, to, to keep me grounded, to keep me balanced. So, and what I mean about this is, when you're traveling solo and you're in a, a different environment, different place, stick. try to get your home routine going where you are. Which I mean, if you take your bath at night 
and uh, you like to watch TV, do that every night when you're on your vacation. That helps you balance yourself, okay? Like what I like I said, what I like to do, I like to take my bath at night and then uh, uh, get in my pajamas and play bridge until I'm very tired and I'm just ready to go to bed. You know, I say my prayers and that's it. I also like to organize my hotel room. I love a little nest, and so I like it. I like to make wherever I am uh, feel warm. And so, you know, I immediately unpack my clothes, put them in the drawers, the closets, everything. So don't don't leave all your stuff in your in your suitcase. I mean, move in. <laughs> And put your your technology, your computer, your iPad or whatever, go put them on your desk. If you have any papers or whatever, make that your work area. Get your room comfy. You know, uh, uh, again, in my bathroom, I like to have all my toiletries just so, so I have a little routine. Organize myself, you know, or develop this little routine. I'll, I'll just share one other little tip. I don't know why, but when I'm traveling, I like to take a bath or a shower in the morning and a bath at night. There's something about water and the bath that is very uh, life-giving to me. That might help you, too, to take two baths a day. (laughs) So, okay. Then, number two. It's kind of a little bit on the same line. It's a discipline thing. Make a daily to-do list. What's your action plan? Know where you're gonna go. I think if you stay focused and and you know what you're gonna what your goals are for that day, you don't have time to be lonely or those feelings don't come in. And then also, you know, not only make your action plan where you're going, know where you're going and how to get there. Because I can tell you. If you get lost, uh, that's one of the things that can trigger that feeling of alone. You start getting a little scared, and then, oh, my God, you, it, can, it can go down fast. So organize yourself. Organize your day. That will help you combat those situations that can trigger loneliness. Okay, number three, another common sense tip but I use a lot, and I love solo travel, is schedule group activities. Take part in day tours. I love when I go to uh, a new city, say Mexico City, I'll get on the, uh, or I'll take the first day, uh, hop on, hop off, bus tour. Now, you know, those aren't fabulous, but they're a good introduction many times, especially if you're by yourself, to a culture, to a place. You get a real kind of reconnaissance of the whole city. They have music usually you listen to and all this commentary about notable monuments and, you know, places where you can go. And you can hop on and hop off. And some of the tickets you can buy for three days. So it's a good, easy way to get you from point A to point B so you don't get lost. And then also it it gets you around people. Now, you don't have to sit there and make friends, but you might make some friends. And I have made friends that way. That's one of the things I do. And then there's specialty tours, tours that are are specific to one thing, like garden tours or food tours. I mean, food tours are really popular now. And I try to take a food tour wherever I go because it's so wonderful. They not You not only try all of these specialty dishes of the culture, you get some typically background information about the place and how the food relates to the culture and why they eat certain foods. You'll be going to restaurants that the locals go to many times that are really fabulous that you couldn't, you, you wouldn't know about by reading, I can tell you. So, uh, you know, specialty tours are really good and there are other people around. They're usually not real big. Also, I like a lot the walking tours. And some of the walking tours now all over the world are actually free and being done by graduate students or people who 
you know, or majoring in, in history or something. And they're really very good. Bike tours uh, are also good. And the reason why I like these two tours, too, is they get you some exercise. And when you exercise, that's another thing. Get your endorphins going. It keeps you from sinking in that, you know, getting to that space where mm, loneliness could could creep in a little yes. bit. Yeah. And then last, you can take classes. There are a lot of people who like to do that now. Cooking classes, dance classes, language classes, art, painting. I mean, there's all kinds of things, which when I first started traveling solo, hmm, cooking class, I mean... They're, I mean, they're, but now they're everywhere. So, um, and even in the hotels that I stay in sometimes, they'll have actually cooking classes there. So, join tours. You don't have to do a lot of them, but it is one way to get you connected with people, people that are travelers, and uh, you start interacting naturally with people, just like if you would meet people for the first time in your home city. Okay, okay. next one is stay connected with family and friends on a regular basis. Now, this can be a double-edged sword because that can make you more lonely. (laughs) (laughs) Say it is. Do it when you feel like it's needed. And also to, you know, obviously relieve any concerns or fears that your family or your friends would have. But, you know, now with technology, you can stay connected, email, social media, Skype, FaceTime. There's no problem with that. But do that. That'll keep you connected, okay? Uh, Next is experience something from home. Now, this is, well, I'll just say, my... There are two things that I always do that kind of make me uh, in tune with home again, especially if I'm kind of ragged or, you know, like I'm getting ready to say, within the next 10 minutes, you're fired up and you're ready to do more. But Starbucks, I love Starbucks. I love coffee. And, you know, Starbucks is pretty uniform all over the world. And I must say, Starbucks always does it for me. (laughs) Wow. I did not think that's what you were going to go for. That's great. Yes. Another thing is when you're in your hotel room, listen to uh, TV. Listen to, if you're, you know, from the United States, listen to U.S. TV. If you like news, CNN or, you know, the headline news, MSNBC or just TV programs, um, you know, movies. So listen to uh, television in your own language. And, and you can, I know, with the English language, I find it all over the world. But uh, maybe some of the more uh, unique languages, you don't have that option. But do that. Because, you know, I wake up in the morning and I turn on the TV. I jump in the shower. You know, I just like I would do at home. <laughs> so do that. Then also music. You know, music is a good mood lifter, and it's a good, uh, it's just a good, it evens you out emotionally. So listen to music that you like to listen to, either through your uh, earphones or, you know, your earbuds or in your room, the radio, or a lot of the TVs now have it. So, uh, you know, if you're getting a little shaky or whatever, just turn on some music, start dancing, <laughs> I don't know, whatever you like that, you know, just makes you happy. So, uh, and then the other thing is sometimes when I travel a lot, say into a completely different culture where all the food is different and everything, and I'll say I've been eating uh, Chinese food for weeks, I will crave a hamburger, french fries, and Coke. Just a regular coat. I will search and search. Usually I go to, you know, uh, a Ritz-Carlton hotel or some American hotel if I can't find something that I think. And let me tell you, it's hard to find a good hamburger in China. (laughs) But but my point is, is I will crave a hamburger, french fries, and a Coke. And I will find it. And that immediately makes me say, okay, you know, um, then I'm good. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, okay, so experience something from home. Then uh, the next one is take care of yourself physically. And this is real important. Even before you travel solo, you need to be in good health. Don't do it if you're not in good health because you, you could have a health event. And I can tell you that is, that's a downhill vacation for sure. But get enough rest. And I do this. I mean, you know, I do not really ever set my alarm clock to wake up when I'm traveling solo unless I have to be somewhere and you know catch a tour or there's something uh, that's opening very early or I have to get up or like a business meeting or something like oh absolutely no I let myself sleep and it's good because you know I'm kind of a night owl I didn't used to be like that but I am now so I'll stay up late you know 12 30 1 o'clock so I don't I, I don't allow myself to get up at 6, 6.30 anymore. I'll sleep until 8, 8.30, you know, and that's okay. It, you know, so get enough rest. Very important. Exercise, I'm, I touched on that. You know, uh, if, if you're walking a lot, typically you don't need it. But some people really exercise a lot at home. And then when they're on the road, they don't do it. And that can get them out of, get them out of sorts easy. It's because of those endorphins. And then I'm wondering, too, sometimes people are, they walk more on a trip than they would normally at home. So it's like they might be overexerting themselves. Oh, yeah. And that, and here again, you need to get your rest. But if, you, if you're if used to a lot of exercise, I mean, go to the gym, find a gym. There are lots of, of places now all over the world that you can go to. And if you're staying in a, in a nice hotel, uh, they all have them, okay? So, uh, and also, back to the eating, when you're hungry, eat. Don't, uh, you know, keep pushing yourself or whatever. If you feel hungry, if it's five times a day, I mean, I know you don't want to, most people don't want to gain weight when they're traveling. And a lot of times it happens because the food can be great. And you think, I'll never come this way again, so I'm going to eat it all. <laughs> but, so, but eat when you're hungry. Because I can tell you, when you get hungry or your blood sugar goes down, that's another thing that can get you in, in a kind of a bad place. So, okay. Uh, number seven, pamper yourself. Now, if you're feeling, you know, like you've been, say, gone for two weeks and, you know, you're, you're feeling like you look a little rough, I mean, or you're just beginning to get tired, maybe you feel like you're going to get a cold or something, I, I love to get a massage. And I'm telling you, I've got massages all over the world, whether it's a Turkish hammams, Russian banyas, <laughs> Thai, Thailand's, you know, uh, orthopedic kind of stretching, you know, cracking you, you know, massage, walking on your back, from foot massages to the forest. I love massages. So, and that always makes me feel so much better the next day. You know, maybe you want to do a beauty day or or just get a manicure or a mani in a pedicure or facial. You'd be surprised how that'll just completely change your whole perspective. One of the things I like to do, I have my hair's a little longer and kind of thick, and to wash my hair a lot sometimes just takes a long time. And, you know, I just, it's one of those things that I obviously have to do. But when I'm on, uh, you know, gone sometimes, I love to just pop into a hair salon and say, do you do blow and goes? And most of them all do now around the world. And let me tell you, I've gotten some beautiful blowouts that kind of way. I know I, I did one in Miami Beach on Lincoln Road. And I think the the, uh, the hair salon was called Oreeb or something. I know people who... Who, who are, know Miami Beach and Lincoln Road know exactly where I'm talking about, but it's a very famous hairstylist that owns it, does all kinds of hair for photo shoots and movie stars and models and everything. 
Well, I just happened to wander in there and said, Can I, do you do a blowout? And I didn't know that they were famous. And so, and he says, you don't know how lucky you are to have gotten an appointment. And so I said, oh, really? And so he all starts telling me about how fabulous the salon is and who the person was. And he was brought from New Jersey to study with this. With, I mean, I was going, oh. And you just walked in. You yes. stumbled upon this. <laughs> so blow and go. <laughs> so that was really good because I came out looking really Woo, nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. The next one is choose a place when you're traveling solo where you know someone. You know, uh, when you're first starting uh, out traveling this way, you know, I always recommend maybe you should go somewhere close to home or, but also, If you go somewhere where you know someone, it's great. Because even if you don't want to uh, call them or go out to eat with them or have a cup of coffee with them, you know you could call them if you had some kind of emergency or you needed some kind of support system. So that that's one of my common sense things that I tell people when they're first uh, going out, uh, going solo. You know, when you're getting used to this kind of travel, and a lot of times it's fun. It's fun to because they'll give you some great tips on where to go, and they'll take you to some really nice places. And uh, I like that because I I like to connect with people I haven't seen for a while, etc. So. Okay, the next one, which is, is, is what I consider one of my big ones to kind of keep me going, is talk to people. Just, you know, I know a lot of people are introverted. They don't like to just start conversations. They just, I don't know, something about it. They just, they just be, they'd rather be quiet. Well, you know, you have to you have to think about pushing yourself to do it. Now, that's not my problem. My problem is I have to talk a a certain amount of words every day or I start getting kind of, you know, (laughs) feeling down because I love to talk. So uh, what I do is, well, it kind of comes natural to me, but, you know, when you're when you're traveling and say you uh you see another lady or another woman who's by herself she could be from uh where you are or she could be a solo traveler and there's an opportunity say you're standing in line at starbucks and you can say you know um are you from here do you speak english or uh you know are you traveling and uh, so that, you know, you'll get a little bit of feedback. They might say, yeah, I'm from here, I'm busy, or whatever, blow it off. Uh, a lot of times, just like you would do at home, that will start it. And then you can say, then you can ask, well, what are the really good places that I shouldn't miss here? What's unique here? What do not do? Um, you know, uh, where should I eat? Uh, where are the cool shops? That kind of thing. And that's really good. I have, I've met some, some people that I'm Facebook friends with that way. And they're, they're delightful people. Another thing is make an effort to talk to the storekeepers, the shopkeepers, the service personnel in your hotel. I always get to know the concierge. And a lot of times, you know, in the real nice hotels, they know you're solo and they'll give you a little special treatment. Well, just, you know, uh, get to know them. It's nice. It makes the whole thing more comfortable and you and you uh, you're you're in tune with where you are and you're much less likely to be lonely or somebody like me who needs to talk or you know if somebody who doesn't like to talk but needs to be talking because I can tell you if you don't talk say you're on a longer trip and you don't talk for a while that's not healthy I don't think so that's my uh suggestion talk to people (laughs) eight is comfort food back to food again say 
you know, you've come in, you've had a long day, you've done this for five days, you are, you've gone to this area of the city, you've gone to the, another area of the city, I mean, you have seen so much, you've taken a thousand photos on your iPhone, and I mean, you're just getting like ragged almost. I have a glass or two of wine at night. I mean, just chill out, you know, I'm serious. That that will make you feel a lot better. I mean, if you don't like to drink, then tea or whatever, you know, you drink when uh, that's comforting to you. During the day when you're out and about, I know myself, I usually get a sinking feeling, uh, what I call the dropsies, around 2.30 or 3. And uh, I love to uh, have a cup of coffee. Or I used to have a cup of coffee and a dessert. Now, since I'm older, I usually get some kind of tea and something sweet uh, or maybe gelato or something like that. But just something that gives you a little sugar, a little relaxation with the tea. It has some caffeine in it, but it'll smooth you out. And so you're less likely to get too tired or, you're, like I said, your blood sugar goes down, etc., Another thing is just good old soup, soup for lunch, chicken soup, (laughs) or some kind of soup for dinner. It's not real heavy, but it's very soothing. Treat yourself to a really good meal. I mean, I like to go every now and then to the, the top restaurant in the city, and I'll set it in my budget. I don't care how much it costs. I'll get the concierge to make the reservation to let Uh, to tell them to let them know I'll be a solo diner I want to sit in a nice table (laughs) and um, you know I I want to to have a nice experience and I'm very excited about going to this good restaurant but what I'm talking about is is try to pick a place where it is solo friendly where you can get a real good meal and treat yourself to a real nice meal and and be ready to savor the food, savor the environment, and uh, don't feel, you know, don't feel like you're going into somewhere that'll just make you feel real lonely. But eating good food will, oh, it'll put you in a great mood. That's the bottom line. Bring a good book or, or a journal. Now, I don't bring books, you know, I, I used to read a lot of books in certain stages in my life but now I have so many magazines that are piled up I just bring a, you know a lot of magazines in my carry-on tote and I kind of go through them at certain times when I have a little time but the thing I like the most to do that deals really with emotions and uh, uh, coping with potential loneliness is to journal And this journaling thing has just been fabulous for me. And I just, it kind of evolved with me because I've always had so many opinions and I see things and everything. And I thought, I need to write all this down because I can't remember it. I don't have a real good memory. So I started journaling. Oh, um, it has to be 12, 15 years ago. So now I have all these journals of my travels where I've been and what I do is every night or every other day I'll sit down and I'll write down everything that I've done whether I liked it things that I've seen what I was thinking about challenges I uh, faced what the people look like things that I didn't really like all kinds of stuff and Oh, boy, I think that is just a really good exercise that, unfortunately, we never take the time to do at home. But I think it's very good. And here again, it's that part of developing that life skill of being, you know, happy, being happy with yourself, even if things are difficult, you know, and to just know that that's all part of life. So I I love to journal. I must say, I haven't done this, but I see this all over with tips of various kinds, is to connect with new friends online. 
And the young people love this. They have what's called meetups. And these meetups basically are uh, groups of like-minded people that are in cities all over the world that have that are interested, say, in the arts, or they're interested in solo travel, or they're interested in wine, or whatever. There's usually always some kind of specific interest that they all are interested in. A lot of the young people love them, and this is a great way some people like to meet new people people that they have something in common with and then you know there's crowd there's couch surfing and uh of course there you're dating uh online (laughs) which i'm not interested in obviously (laughs) because i'm married but the bottom line is is that is available now i can't recommend that per se i put this as one of my tips because a lot of people do it, I just say, be careful, especially when you're not in your home country, because you don't really know who you're meeting, and never meet anybody that you're not in a big crowd or whatever. So I say this one with caution. You're giving the people the idea, but use at your own discretion. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Then number 13 is do specialty activities that interest you. Okay. Most of us have some kind of hobby or some kind of interest. I love to play tennis. I love to play bridge. I love uh, music. I was a music major for, you know, my first degree. So when I travel, and I actually love gardening. I don't do gardening, but my husband has a green thumb, and uh, I love our yard. He loves our yard. And so I just love to go to gardens all over the world, whether they're formal gardens or English gardens or botanical gardens. I try to go to all the gardens wherever I go, and I just love that. If you like art, you know, go to the museums. Go to the all, you know, go where the art galleries are. I, mean, I like art. I'm not good. I'm not artistic, but I like to collect art. So, you know, I go to the different art districts. I mean, just go and just, you know, explore and look around. That's great because it's tuning into what your natural talents are, what, you know, you're interested in, and actually somewhat what you do when you're at home. I'm going to confess right now, one of my favorite (laughs) things to do, I wouldn't say as a hobby, is probably an obsession, is shop. So, if I'm not doing, if I'm not in a good space or whatever, retail therapy, (laughs) here I come. Now, I say that, but I say that also with be careful because you could blow a lot of money. But the way I shop is I love to go to the flea markets and I love to go to the ethnic shops and the boutique shops and what's unique, uniquely made there. You know, like when I was in Russia the first time, I know they have beautiful handmade china that is still made at the Imperial Porcelain Factory. So I had my uh, private guide arrange for her to take me through the factory and see how the uh, porcelain was made and watch the ladies painting and really learned about uh, just the whole uh, process of it and how why it's so beautiful. Then at the end, you go to the shop with all the <laughs> beautiful uh, finished product and I ended up buying a whole set of china <laughs> which I loved and really wasn't expensive but it's a souvenir for me that uh, will always give me great pleasure because I love Russia I love Russian um, design architecture etc and uh, so well, and the dishes are tied to a real memory Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So bottom line is do do the things that interest you. I mean, you can do some sightseeing, but make sure you do what what you uh, what you really like, because, you know, typically there are other people in this new place that you're traveling that are doing that. So, 
Okay, then uh, my next one is bring something from home with you that is sentimental. Now, well, Harvard did a study, and their study revealed that really the thing that triggers, you know, or the, is the most dis- triggers the most discomfort in solo travel is missing your family. And that's kind of where you're you're feeling lonely, okay? It's this missing of your family. A lot of people bring like a little, or people suggest that you bring a little, you know, uh, photograph, framed photograph, and put it on your nightstand where you're traveling. And a lot of people do do that, especially men. <laughs> now, I carry my photos of my family in my wallet. But bring bring photographs of your family, uh, and and it's nice when you wake up and you and you see your husband and your two children. I mean, that's just it's nice. I like scented candles. I I burn candles at my home, uh, and I'll bring the little travel candles of some of the scents I like, and I'll I'll, I'll burn them in the room, and it's very nice. It's very soothing. It's calming, and. You know, on a subconscious level or a deeper level, it is, it's good. So it's a mood lifter, I guess you would say, or it does something kind of even out, even out your your emotions. Um, and then, <laughs> I've never done this, but some people even bring stuffed animals, travel, travel <laughs> companions. <laughs> and I don't mean to be, to laugh at that, but... Look, I know there's some people that do it. And if you like that, do it. Because just that little thing can make you feel like everything's okay. Um, you know, it's top of the morning. So, okay. So bring something from home with you that is meaningful. All right? Okay. Then choose comfortable defin- destinations to travel to. Especially when you're traveling the first time common language i mean you know if you speak english uh you know uh, obviously travel all over the united states you'll have no problem there canada uh england the british isles most of western europe um australia those are the places where you should go first unless you're just real adventurous and you don't care whether you can speak the language or not and you know you're willing to get a private guide or whatever to help you but i suggest go somewhere where you speak the language and you can read the language that just in itself will make you not feel so like i'm somewhere on another planet (laughs) which will trigger a, a bad feeling of loneliness and then also i did Talk about places closer to home. I think that's kind of good when you're first starting out. And there's also, there's been a lot of research done about happy places versus uh, places that aren't happy. And why are these places happy and not happy? And it's gone now into travel destinations. So uh, here recently, uh, Norway was uh, deemed the happiest place to travel to because the people are so happy there. Denmark is also, I think, it won last year. So there are some destinations that are a lot happier than others. Think about that when you're choosing where you want to travel. I mean, do you want to go somewhere where people are real stressed out and and everything? I mean, if you do, uh, you have to be ready for that. Next is shorter trips. I think those probably, unless you're like me, that just need to pedal to the metal and really dig deep. I mean, I went last year 50 days around the world, my first round the world trip. And I must say, even me, avid solid traveler, that you have to, it's a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. And there'll be times when, um, you do feel kind of like you've been gone from home too long or whatever. So what I say, a a good uh, weekend getaway, a couple of those a year, long weekends are great. Ten-day trips are probably uh, optimal. After ten days, that's when everything kind of starts, uh, could, could 
things could go downhill again. And, and it might, some of this really might be uh, uh, connected with your biorhythms or it might be somewhat hormonal or who's, who knows, connected to the moon. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, my husband would say, yeah, yours is connected to the moon. <laughs> But the bottom line is, is if you stay longer than 10 days, it, it's more difficult. So um, uh, if, you're, if you want to do something longer, get ready to, to, uh, uh, to deal with some bouts of loneliness. Then we're coming to number 17, not too much more. Avoid being vulnerable. Oh, my gosh. This is when, it, when, you, when you become fearful, like especially if you're lost or whatever. That's when you can really feel like that, that kind of pang of uh, panic comes in or whatever. So... Going back into this, don't put yourself in, you know, a vulnerable position. Know where you're going to be. Know the areas where you're going to be walking. Talk to your your uh, concierge. I know one of the recent times that that I let it slip, but I didn't really even realize this, what happened. And it can happen. So that's here again another reason why you, you got to know that you have to lean on yourself and wait for that second win when something happens and use your use your problem solving skills okay i got three more and they're getting more heavy now okay cuz these are we're coming to the big ones all right accept the feeling of loneliness when it hits you hard now it you know you never know when this could hit you it could hit you on a weekend getaway and you've been doing this a lot you know and you 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 never think about being lonely boy all of a sudden here it comes so you know and uh and it when it hits you hard you can't readily make it a go go away so you just have to go with it you listen to your lonely thoughts and if, if you feel like crying, it's okay. Shed a tear. I mean, you know, that's probably exactly what you need to do is just cry. <laughs> so, and this has happened to me before. I know one time, I, and I still, I can't remember exactly. I, I don't think I put it together really what caused it. I think it probably goes back into that, what I said, lack of nurturing or whatever. But um, I was coming I was flying home. I think it was my first trip to Russia, Moscow to uh, Houston, long flight. I mean, the first six hours, I kept crying and crying and crying. And the poor stewardesses in, uh, on Singapore Air, they didn't know what to do. I was in business class. Everybody was, you know, having a good time. <laughs> They're crying, and so I was writing in my journal and everything. But you know, when it hits you hard, I mean, let me tell you something: you, you really, you just can't quit crying. You can try, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I kept telling the stewardesses, "Look, I'm really okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having a good cry. <laughs> I'm really okay." And I knew I was okay, but so. You know, you have to realize basically you have bad days at home. And, you know, when this happens, you, you, you know yourself, you slow down. You don't push yourself. You just kind of, like I said, you wait till that second wind comes in. You know, uh, you might get a massage. I, I don't know exactly. But basically what I like to try to do is once I, if I end up crying, then I, I quit. But I like to try to live in the moment. And this is another thing that I do try to do very, very, a lot in my life. Because, you know, we're all living in a real stressful world. And we all have regrets. And we all have worries about the future. And you can't, you can't relive your past or change your past. And you, to worry about the future just completely wears you out. <laughs> So live it up in the day. Just stay focused in the moment. So I really try to do that. And I, I've done that for a long time in my life. And I really think that works magic. 
So think about that if you're having a real a real big one uh, in the moment. Then also, uh, you know, look to solace in nature. I know that sounds kind of, you know, maybe a little out there. But go to, go to the park and just sit in the park or walk in the park. Uh, you know, gardens are nice. Sunsets uh, sometimes are just gorgeous in different places in the world. Try to get more in tune with nature. It, it, it does help. It really helps. I, I like that myself. Then, on the same uh, 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 thought, if you can't get through it, go to bed early and sleep it off. I know that happened to me when I was in China. I had gone to China solo for five weeks, and I had this hellacious schedule. I mean, I wanted to see all the provinces of China or the main regions. I didn't see everything, but I saw a lot. Well, I had arrived in Shanghai, and I got to this beautiful boutique uh, former palace mansion uh, in Shanghai that uh, I am pay a very famous American architect who is of Chinese lineage his grandfather built and this is an exquisite place to stay and I didn't expect it to be that good I knew it was very beautiful from the pictures but I got there I checked in all of the the Chinese antiques and the, the art deco design of this I think it was about four stories this mansion it had a beautiful folly in the in the garden it was just wonderful then they brought me up to my room I had a huge bedroom and a living room and a balcony and these exquisite Chinese antiques the bathroom was unbelievable it had the most modern uh, commode I'd ever seen it could do any everything but talk to you <laughs> I mean, it actually scared me at first. But when I got in that room at around 2, 2.30, oh, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. First of all, I thought, God, my husband needs to be here. This place is beautiful. My husband's a, a, a retired architect. I said, he would just, it, it just hit me. I was I was tired, It, it just everything. And I just decided I'm not going anywhere. I'm getting in this big, beautiful bed and going to sleep. <laughs> it was. It did the trick. The next day, it. W- I was ready to uh, take on Shanghai. So, bottom line, sleep it off. Then, ultimately, if it's so bad, always know you can always go home. <laughs> Don't think you can't go home. If you just had it and you're really in a bad space, and you need to get back with uh, your family, your friends, or you need some help, go to the airport and tell them, you know, you're in a bad way. They probably won't, you know, do anything as far as penalize you and cost ch- charge you to, to change your ticket. If you're real sincere, a lot of times that happens. So, okay, two more. Next one is meditate. Now, I know most people who, you know, think about how to tips for how to get over loneliness when you're traveling solo. They don't think about meditating. But let me tell you something. I wasn't not a natural meditator for sure because I like to go. I don't go, go, go. Yeah, I don't want to sit. But when you really are feeling lonely, you know, you might as well just deal with it. So this is a tip. Go somewhere where you can sit and be quiet. Be still for an hour. Don't have anything on your mind. Don't have don't listen to anything. Try to go somewhere where it's as quiet as possible. You know, a lot of times parks are nice. You'll hear things, but it's usually nature that you're hearing. Um, you know, somewhere even in a, a, a more quiet place on the hotel ground sometimes is very nice. But sit there and listen to your thoughts. Confront the pain or the negativity or whatever is going on and then just say, I'm just going to let this go. And just keep letting it, you know, the bad come in and just say, 
I'm just going to let this go. You know, and just by thinking like that, it does help. And one, it, I really think this is one of the positive things about solo travel, even if it's challenging, is it gives you time alone to get in touch with yourself on a deeper level. And it triggers that, okay? So when you're away from home, family, distractions, pressing problems, deadlines, and you can just think and reflect, it's really cleansing for your soul. It's real good. So... You know, think about it. Meditate. I mean, there are a lot of places that you can go to now that just take you on a one-week meditation to help you detox your emotions, things that you haven't taken the time to really resolve. And then the last one is a tip from my mother. Basically, don't feel sorry for yourself. (laughs) I mean... You know, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Be determined to have a positive attitude and work through these tough periods. You know, solo travel really does take courage. You know, uh, even me, as gutsy as I am, it takes courage sometimes to get on that plane again. I'm thinking, oh, God, you know, I'm so fearful of flying. Well, when I was a child, I was petrified, but I've done it so much, I'm not as afraid anymore. But I still think, now how does this metal thing weighing tons stay up in the air? And, you know, it takes courage and when you're stepping out of your, your comfort zone. It can be painful. But when you overcome the sphere of loneliness through what I call solo travel, which I think is a great, one of the great ways to overcome uh, feeling lonely or the fear of loneliness, it can help you really, really get those life skills. It is liberating, it's enriching, and it's definitely empowering. And I'm not saying this just to be trite. It is true. Wrapping it back around, you know, I know solo travel for me, it's made me more confident, much more compassionate, and definitely an independent woman. And I feel like I understand the importance of developing the life skills of knowing how basically to be happy alone. And, uh, you know, uh, my true belief is once you conquer uh, this, this, you know, knowing how to be happy alone, your relationships will be stronger and your life will be more balanced, fulfilled, and ultimately happier. Don't let anything stop you. That's really what Solo Travel Talk is all about. Speaking of which, is the dread of packing tripping you up? You aren't alone. To that end, Astrid has a fabulous packing list. It's thorough. It's complimentary. You can get it from her website. Just go to astridtravel.com. And there's a place right there, right when you get to astridtravel.com, you can download immediately the packing list. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, and really find it any of the finer places that podcasts can be found. If you like what you're hearing, why don't you share Solo Travel Talk with a friend? And of course, on any of those sites, you can rate us, review us. We'd like to hear your feedback. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Solo Travel Talk. Thank you for listening to Solo Travel Talk. Follow Astrid on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. To learn more about Astrid or her solo travel advisors, visit our website, astridtravel.com.